Hello everybody, Dwayne Thank here, and today we are finally going to get underway to our Duck Hunt analysis in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Now you guys have probably been waiting a long time to hear my opinion on this matter, uh, but um, the main thing, the main issue that delayed this video for so long was it's been hard to find Duck Hunt footage until the demo was just released. Not too many people were playing him for obvious reasons, but surprisingly, uh, when I went out to see the full demo build myself, I actually saw a couple of Duck Hunt players in there. So if you go on my channel, you'll actually find, I think, uh, I have either three or four videos on there of some Duck Hunt. Um, we got one of me, one of Paris, and then I think two random ones that, that they weren't particularly good, but you'll at least be able to see more of his moveset that way. And uh, unfortunately, I didn't get to choose the one where I wasn't trying to test things out, because uh, like that one, we were able to kind of see how he plays more in action. Um, but definitely, I am planning on going back this week and getting more footage. I might even go out today before SmackDown happens and try to capture some more footage for all of you guys. Um, but with that being said, let's get into the video and let's see what changes they made to Duck Hunt, because they made a significant amount. Um, so before we get into the first video, like the first real video that we had of good Duck Hunt footage, I do want to go over some of the changes that we have combined. Um, so generally, uh, one of the biggest changes is the duck is no longer a hurt box. So one of the big issues with duck hunt was that, um, the duck itself, that guy, he was a hurt box. So basically whenever you, we did a fair, we did a down to an up tail up air. If you hit the duck, you were hitting us. So basically we we were now a sword character before we were not a sword character it was like us extending out our limbs whenever we did a fair and that was no good because that that move wasn't so that move wasn't too active so once we whiffed it was really easy to punish us you didn't really have to think too hard and it's just like a lot of jank things would just kill us really really early not to mention uh bayonet had a pretty particular setup on duck hunt where um i know one of our resident players uh owl he he's also a bayonet Bayonetta main as well, and he was able to do the single hit uh, attack, the single hit uh, witch twist on duck cut quite a bit off the duck hit box. I'm not exactly sure how it works, but he knew how to aim it properly, so that way he could get the single hit and carry off the top pretty consistently. Uh, of course, I mean, that move's been nerfed quite a bit now, so I, I doubt that would have even been much an issue, but regardless, huge, huge, huge buff. It It's basically like cutting his hurt box in half. And that means when we crouch now, we should be able to duck below most projectiles, maybe even being around like uh, Kirby Crouch Height now, because whenever we did down tilt, the duck would come off his back and we'd get to that Kirby Crouch Height. So that might just be an indefinite thing now. So definitely huge buff for Duck Hunt. It was actually kind of necessary too. I wouldn't say he needed it to win, but definitely just like a big quality of life improvement that you'll notice a lot the more that you play with him seriously. Uh, forward air, uh, short hop version now uh, auto cancels off a short hop, which is, that's big, before you'd short hop fair and you would still land with lag no matter what, so good buff there. Uh, the landing lag's been significantly reduced, I believe, going down to 9 frames. Yeah, 9 frames of landing lag on fair now. Um, also, the other thing, too, is the fat frames for it. Extremely quick now. Um, you can just, like, when you full hop, you can do, like, fair bear really quickly. You'll just notice fair is just a much quicker move than it ever was in the past. Um, I don't think we see this duck hunt in particular use it too often. Um, oh yeah, clay pigeon's definitely a move I got to talk about. Yeah, like there we saw bear there. You can kind of see how much quicker this move is. Actually, I haven't seen exactly what frame this comes out on. And I'm not sure if this is 60 frames per second. This might be 30 frames per second. But um, we can... I think we can get an idea... Because I think, okay, I'm pretty sure this is where Bear starts. Um, so back in Smash 4, Bear, I believe it's like a frame 10 move. No, Bear is a frame 7 move. So let's see here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, so it's still a frame 7 move. So this is a 60 frame per second video. That's actually extremely helpful. Um, so yeah, the bear not coming out any earlier, but you'll see how much landing lag it has now. Uh, before in Smash 4, it was actually got, it had pretty abysmal landing lag at uh, 24 frames. So you could not land with this move safely at all. It was, it was not a good landing option. It had a good auto cancel height. Like you could auto cancel off a short hop and you could barely fast follow it at the end of your short hop. But generally like it wasn't a move you were trying to land with ever. It was just, Hey, I think I've got a pretty good read on you that you should die. So this is seven, eight. 9, 10, 11. And then 
so this move used to end on frame 10. This one might end on frame 10 still. This local, it might be active here. 12. Okay, so it might have been extended by one frame, but I'm not sure. And then let's see the landing lag, because that's what I really care about. I think he's, I think he's on the ground here. One, two, okay, now that's, okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, God, when does he start that roll? That's hard to say. Okay, that definitely looks like the start of the roll. I think that's the start of the roll, so let's see. From when he first lands. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, so I think this is now twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Okay, so I think it's got fourteen frames of landing lag now, which is a ten frame landing lag reduction. That's huge. Uh, basically, you can now land with this on shield. Just make sure you space it. And now the fact that the duck's also a, now a disjoint, that means it's not like, oh, you hit shield, you land, you'd be able to grab it. It'll be a lot harder to do. Not also to mention that he kind of pancakes as well, so certain grabs may have a harder time trying to punish it. So definitely big, big, big buff for him. Bear still a kill move um, in all my testing that I did. Uh, neutral air. So unfortunately, I, th I, think, I think the... Actually, no. Um, actually, no. This one didn't have anything unfortunate to happen to it. Only buffs here. Um, the landing lag was reduced significantly. Uh, I believe... I think we have the numbers for it. Nair is now 10 frames of landing lag. So before, Nair used to have 17 frames. So we lost 7 frames of landing lag on that move. So that's going to be a very easy one to land with. Basically, any combos that might have been potential from it will basically be guaranteed now. Just because like you know we're able to act so much quicker out of it. Yeah, like look how quick that was. Let's go back a sec. Okay, so there's an error. And that, there you go. You see the weak hit. So the one thing that we haven't been able to confirm is they fi if they fix the hitboxes. Because uh, the hitboxes in Smash 4 were honestly one of the worst things in the entire world. Um, I can show you what I mean real quick. So with Duck Hunt Snare in the past, uh, what it was was a move where it had a strong initial hit. But then it just, um, with like a good circle. And then afterwards, it just becomes like a bunch of paws. So, yeah, yeah. See? And then it just becomes the pause afterwards. And it was a garbage move. And then you can also see the Ducks of Hurt box here with that little thing. But yeah, so good initial hit. But yeah, this thing, like when he does this little cartwheel thing, it would whiff a lot of times. A lot more than you'd want it to. And that was no good. So here, the, the initial strong hit missed. So there's a good chance that that hitbox size didn't change. Um, but when you go further, it looks like she gets hit by... Actually, wait. Okay, so her either she got hit by the center of him. If she got hit by the center, that means there's finally a hitbox on him. But more than likely, she got hit by the foot. That's what I'm going to assume. But let's see this landing lag. Because the landing lag is like nothing now. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yep, ten frames of landing lag. So the numbers that we did were correct on that. Uh, yeah, so that, I don't need to tell you, seven frame landing lag buff is hugely significant for as far as landing is going and making that move safe and just increasing the combo potential off it because the, the weak hit was able to combo to a bunch of things. Uh, one of them was if your opponent didn't tech, you got a guaranteed up smash off of that. Um, and now here we can even do down smash or F smash. So the fact that the dance ca dash cancel is part of the thing, that nair, nair to smash attack could actually be a huge um, new tool for Duck Hunt. So that's something that we'll have to see. Uh, the other thing that's really, the one that's actually like a blessing and a curse at the same time is uh, down air. So the startup of the move got reduced. And the landing lag got reduced by a lot. Like, that move lands, I think, now with uh, 14 frames of lag. It used to land with 34 frames of lag, which, you know, if, if that was the case, then it's like a 20-frame difference. Um, I, 
don't know if he uses down air in this game. But I think I I think I use it in the one game that I have. Well, let's see. Let's see if we can find him real quick using this move. Yeah, as you can see there, off a short hop, he was able to do it, but he kind of slumped back a little bit. So he was still... So, like... Actually, wait, he started the move fairly late. He wasn't rising with it, so that's why he still landed with lag. But we can just see exactly how much lag he had. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then, yeah, he's good. He's back in neutral there. So 9 friends of landing lag. Uh, so no, still no down air. Up air there. Up air is really good now. Uh, one of the best changes that they did to up air, and of course, up B, you can now um, act out of. You can throw out specials, you can throw out attacks, and you can air dodge out of it. But up air, basically the moves auto link into each other. It's really hard for them to fall out. Um, even if you use the same methods that would cause people to fall out of up air in Smash 4, they won't necessarily do it. It's like the move would have to miss really, really badly for them to fall out. Or it's like they're just flying too fast and it doesn't catch them. It has to be like one or the other for them to fall. It's like if they fall out, it was just like there's no way that move was going to fully connect in the first place. But like if, as long as you just land it, they should not fall out of that move anymore. Let's see, do we have a down air? Yeah, and that's another change that's very significant. Uh, F smash got changed quite a bit. I don't think the startup changed at all, but we can. The good thing is, since this footage is 60 frames per second, we can find that out for ourselves. And it doesn't look like he charged it at all, which is good. So he landed with lag here, and I think this is where he starts it. So we'll call this frame one of F smash. Um. Yeah, let me see if we have exact frames on. Okay, so Dare now has 20 frames of landing lag, which is still a 14 frame improvement over what it was before. So this means if you do land Dare on somebody that you should still be able to get a combo off of it, um, especially since uh, spikes are no longer techable. Uh, but we'll have to see. It might be just a little bit too slow. If not, if you don't get a true combo, you'll at least get a frame trap off of it. Yeah, for F Smash. So F Smash was never a quick move, but it always killed extremely early, as you'll see. ZSS gets hit by this move at 65.5% and she dies. She gets obliterated from center stage. So that still be, speaks good news to us. Um, I think even in Smash 4, if like the entirety of S-Smash connected, it still may have been able to kill, but there is a chance it might have had an increase in power. Um, actually, there's a good way we can test this. So if the knockback stayed the same, what we're going to do right now is we're going to see what the damage values are for each hit. Because uh, once we know that, then we can see if it did actually get a buff. Because like if the first two hits do like 2 and like 3%, and the last one got um, a higher buff compared to the 9% that it does in um, in Smash 4, then we know that damage-wise, by just increasing that final hit value, it can actually increase the amount of knockback that it does on the final hit. So let's see. So this is frame 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11... 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. All right, um, I just wanted to say something really, really important right here. Uh, but I did just notice while editing this video that we, in fact, do have direct confirmation. The duck is, in fact, not a hurt box at all. As you can see right here, we see ZSS actually getting the grab box out right there. She starts at a, like a couple of frames before, and we can see the tether actually forming right there. And it's there. That's like the fourth frame that that tether is there. So that means not only is Duck Hunt low profiling this, like they're both on the same plane, even though this is a kind of a wacky stage, as you see with that hill right there. But the tether itself is going right through the duck itself. So this is exact confirmation that the duck is, in fact, not a hurt box. You cannot hurt it. You cannot even grab it. No nothing, even when you're in a neutral state, it is just not a hurt box, period, whatsoever. Um, but you're going to just see that um, the biggest change with F Smash is that it now tracks the opponent wherever it hits them. So since I hit them there and she's being launched up, the F Smash is going to follow her. If I didn't hit it, then the F Smash will follow the stage, so most likely it would go down here. But yeah, as you see, that last frame of where it hits is absolutely insane. It makes... It just looks it looks goofy. <laughs> so very kindly. Like, yeah, legit, this is this is where Duck on his, and this is where the final hit ends up. So it ends up going here. Uh, the other change that they did to F Smash is that it no longer extends the larger you the longer you charge it. So that's actually um, 
that's actually pretty important. So you can no longer do those really janky kills where you charge it up and nobody knows, oh, I'm going to get blasted by it. Um, so actually, let's see how much damage it does. So the first one did 65.5%. I mean, the first, she was at 65.5%. So first, so first it did roughly 4%. Um, so that's in line with what it did before. The next one did 4% as well. So it looks like damage value wise, this might be the same. So 73. Oh, okay. So they did a 1% buff to the final hit of F Smash. So that actually could be really significant with killing earlier. And that might have been the reason why it killed now. Um, DI too. DI might have been a bit important factor. Something that I noticed is that now when you hit somebody, um, you will actually see a DI indicator appear on them, which I do want to point out to you guys. Oh, actually, it's a little bit hard to see here. Yeah, actually, you can't see it on that one. It kind of gets a little bit too pixelated. Um, but yeah, at least we do got to confirm that um, F Smash is now does have a 1% increase on that final hit. That's a big improvement. Like, even half a percent would have been good, but a whole percent, that's actually really good as far as knockback is concerned. Um, and I'm assuming that the knockback growth didn't change at all. Now, if you guys don't know, the knockback growth of this move is actually as strong as Bowser's F Smash from Smash 4. So if that's unchanged, then that speaks really, really good for Duck Hunt. Um, other changes that he's gone through. So F Smash. A down smash you don't see in here, and up smash you don't really see. Those smash attacks are essentially the same. Um, but when people have tested it, they've reported that no one has been able to fall out of those moves, which is really good. F smash, the only time I've ever seen somebody fall out of it, because because it looked like a phantom hit. Like it, they were so far outside that like it it just wasn't gonna connect no matter what you did. But outside of that, F Smash has been reportedly basically never failed. Down Smash never failed. Up Smash never failed. And the new dash cancel mechanics makes a running down smash a really good option because it comes out of you quick. Um, I believe it's still like frame 12 or something like that. Fortunately, I don't think I have any footage of myself using that move. I don't know if Paris was using it either. Um, but definitely, I do encourage you to come out and look at these um, videos when you get a chance to. Uh, down tilt has a quicker recovery. Unfortunately, I don't really have any footage showing that off. Um, that's what I've heard. So Clay Pigeon, unfortunately, some people were assuming that it had a faster startup. That is not true or the case at all. Um, Clay Pigeon is just the same as it was before um, as far as um, end lag and startup is concerned. So don't don't get your hopes up on that move. But for some odd reason, it does feel a little bit easier to spam. I'm not exactly sure why. When you do watch this video, I'm really sorry about the potato quality. Because... Um, Unfortunately, the guy didn't know the camera was zoomed out. So this is the interesting changes with Duck Hunt. So I'm pretty sure Can is still frame one still, uh, but you're gonna notice something very interesting happen here. So if we look at this frame by frame, what I wanted to do is I wanted to test frame one canning out um, against Ridley because I just knew that that was an easy move to time, but there's some things that we're not sure of. So when Ridley lands his down B, there's a huge cutscene that happens. We're not sure if you can't hurt him during this cutscene at all. Uh, because one of the things that you'll see is that the can does get summoned. The can is summoned right here. And now you can see a better visualization of it right there. And it's literally right where Ridley's tail is. So, like, at first I thought, okay, maybe it appeared too high. But no, that's not the case. The hitbox went right where the can is. So, I'm not sure if there's any mechanic changes to the can in terms of canning out of things. Or if Ridley straight up cannot get hit whenever he lands this down B. However, it's still just an interesting case to look at. Um, but of course, you know, Ridley's in enough end lag that the can is still going to hit him at the end of the day. And the can, um, let's see, so he was at 44.8%. Can, when all the move, when the entire thing connected, it did um, 3. So it did like about 12%. About 12%. Um, let's see how much it does here. So he's at 44.8%. Fifty-seven point six. So let's do this. So fifty-seven point six minus forty-four point eight. So twelve point eight. So it actually got a one percent increase in uh, knockback, and that's most likely due to the can explosion itself. So that means that does nine percent base damage, which means it should kill earlier, which is that is good. Uh, the other thing too to keep in mind is that this is in free for all, so the damage over here overall is going to be less than what it is in one v one. So that speaks good in terms of killing power as far as duck hunt can is concerned. Um, but yeah, I mean overall, just a minor thing to keep note of. Let's see if we can see the dare change. Yeah, so look how high I perform dare. Um, 
See, look, I'm all the way up here, and then I fastball it, and I still land with lag. So, if you guys were wondering, can you short hop uh, auto cancel dare? You definitely can't. Even from a full hop, you may not really be able to. Like the uh, the duration of that move seems like it might have been extended, but you do land with a lot less lag now. So, well, let's count it out from here. It should be frame 20, but let's double check and make sure. This is a 30 frame per second video, so I am going to multiply each one of these button presses times two to get um, a more accurate rendition of what we have. But let's see. So, so two, four. Six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. Also, we'll probably be able to pancake under a lot of things since the duck is no longer in her box. Uh, Sixteen, eighteen, twenty. Okay, and then we move. So, yeah, roughly frame twenty is when we are able to act again. But as you can see, definitely no longer short hop auto cancel height, which. It sucks, but the landing rag reduction made it worth it, um, at least in my opinion. But yeah, not really going to be much of a neutral tool anymore, but it will be a much better landing tool now. Uh, dash attack is now a kill move. Uh, I believe we do have footage of that. I have not watched that yet. So this will actually be, <laughs> well, actually be my first time looking at this move killing. Um, let's, just, let's just see what we can watch here. Yeah, so Nintendo was actually able to confirm a lot of the changes, so shout out to him. He was the one that was able to confirm the F-Smash changes that happened. And there he's showing off, um, he's trying to see if there was the Sour Spot to it. So we did confirm that uh, Fair still does have that Sour Spot hitbox and it still has that Sweet Spot hitbox, as shown there. Um, the other thing too is you can hit the can in the air as well. And when you shoot the can, um, this is actually important because you can actually force F-Smash to be a um, an anti-air. So when you hit the can... You're going to notice that it's going to actually start popping up like it did in, um... Like it does in, uh... Like it does when it hits somebody. So if that's important if you want to force an anti here. So I think the first hit... Does the first hit hit can? Yeah, it does. So yeah, now you'll notice that now it's following the can. So that became its target. Now it's shooting up. And now it's going to shoot it like one last time. And now, yeah, there you go. So yeah, as you can see, shoot can if you want um, up F smash to go up in the air. So great thing to keep in mind and great way to know that you can answer your opponents by having can here, F smash it, you know where you're going to be covering. Actually, let's look, let's look at the end lag of that move because I'm actually not sure. I'm actually not sure how if the FAF has been improved on that. So let's consider this hit to be frame. So if this is frame 29, let's see. So 29. Oops. Gotta hit this real quick. So 29, 30, 31. 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55. Okay, so 55 is the FAF for this. And then... Wow, it's actually a lot quicker. Um, unless this is a 30 frame per second video, but it doesn't seem like it is. Um, because the FAF before was 67. So if that's the case, we got a 12 frame FAF reduction, if my math is correct on this. And that's the case, that's significant. That means F Smash is significantly safer than it used to be in Smash 4, which that's just nothing but good news. Um, so be able to spam this a little bit more then. Yeah, hit something, one up again. Yeah, see there again, we can see the can launching up by getting hit by F smash. Okay, 
I really want to see him just use dash attack and kill somebody. Okay, yeah, so there's up smash. As you can see, same exact animation for the most part. Um, reportedly, nobody has fallen out of his smash attacks just yet, so we don't know if um, F smash will, up smash will be entirely consistent. Um, the one that I'm curious about is down smash, because down smash actually did have a lot of good perks to missing. <laughs> as weird as it sounds, but when down smash did miss, there were some characters that it was just a basic zero to death the second you hit him with that first hit at the ledge, so we'll have to see. Yeah, so it doesn't seem like anybody's going to be at death percent just yet. Um, but yeah, some other mechanic changes that I can go into. Uh, Can did get some big changes, as you saw. Can aside, it's kind of questionable right now, and definitely... Oh yeah, there I showed off the auto-cancel um, not working off a of short hop. So Clay Pigeon, interesting change. When you do side B, um, if it misses, you have to shoot it individually, and you have to shoot it three times individually to break it. If it hits somebody and you press B, then it'll do the normal thing that it did in Smash 4, where it shot it three times and broke it, and then you'd get a combo off of that. So, yeah, just an overall interesting mechanic change, and it just feels easier to combo off of as well. And then, yeah, fortunately, I did a lot of that move, that final smash, which I did not want to do. Yeah, as you saw me there, try to use down smash again, but, I mean, down air again, but not really in the best of ways. And you can see, not super strong, like it's not going to kill Incineroar at, let's see what percentage he was at. God, that guy was... That, the camera work was so bad. I can't even see how much damage it did. Which is unfortunate. Let's see if I can find anything else. Okay, yeah. So I think I'll show... Yeah, so... When you shoot when you shoot the clay pigeon at first, and it misses... So I shot it before it hit Ridley, and now it hits Ridley. It, when it, the next button that I press, it'll only shoot it once. So you have, if you shoot it at all before it hits somebody, you have to press it individually. So just something important to know. It's kind of hard to see it on this camera because he just moves away when it happens. Also, yeah, we can actually get a, let's look at the faff of that fair. So we're definitely able to, we can definitely find it out right now. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I think fair, let's just make sure fair came out. Fair comes out frame seven. So, so that's one, two, three. Okay. Yeah, so that, that sounds about right. Like this is frame this is like frame seven, six, three. So six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40, and then 42, 44. So it's like frame 42. The faff on fair. Wait, the faff on fair was 46? Hmm. Interesting. So I'm pretty sure that this is. That means it would be a two frame faff buff. But I'm pretty sure it's now like more. Like it's quicker than it was before. Backer, I'm pretty sure it's quicker. Backer's faff used to be uh, 40, uh, frame 42, but when you look at it in this engine, it looks a lot quicker than that. Kind of hard to say with the 30 FPS video. Okay, so I should be showing off Canicide next, um, and you'll see the this one had a really weird change. So whenever you blow yourself up, you get sent in the opposite direction of your opponent, which is a huge significant change. So no longer can you get those kill confirmed 50-50s by blowing yourself up with your opponent. And when you try to recover with Canicide now, you'll be sent away instead of toward the stage. So you can no longer use it as a get back on stage for free tool, which is actually extremely unfortunate. That was definitely one of his best attributes. 
So let's see how quick this comes out. So, okay, that's when he starts it. That's when I started. So, two, four, six. So we at least see it come out frame five at, at worst. But I think it comes out before that. So this is six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. So it looks like at earliest, it may be active frame 16 from hitting it, which actually does line up with what it was in Smash, uh, in Smash 4, Smash 4. Um, the can was generated frame 1, um, but the kick wouldn't happen until frame 16. And I think that's exactly what's happening here. So as far as launching the can is concerned, it's still frame 16. But whether it can break us out of combos is what remains to be seen. So yeah, 16, that's when the, that's when the, the explosion basically happens. So now we both get sent away from each other. Um, and that's what happens there. So yeah, big change to can aside. Not sure if it is it'd be immediately not as effective as it was in Smash 4, but it still may be used for combo breaking. And there is a chance that, you know, if your opponent's at a higher percent and they can die, then great. If you're at the ledge, it's just going to put you off stage, so you're not going to really want to use it there. Uh, Gunman overall, this, the frame data is pretty similar, but I think they do launch, they do shoot a little bit faster. They're five to different Gunmen, so it's, each one you do have to test out individually. And the fast frames do seem to be a little bit quicker, but that could be a placebo effect because that's kind of what we've noticed with all the special moves so far. Um, but overall, he's feeling really good. Boxing wise is where he got improved the most. And then the biggest thing is like can setups in the air. The fact that we can now um, hit the can while it's um, up there. Like let me get, let me bring this up. And also the fact that we can. Um, Oh man, they don't have any good footage of it. But yeah, there was like this one doubles. There was like this one doubles match that they had, um, where we could see somebody like full hop can and then bear it in the air, and that's where all the new setups are going to be coming from. So that's something that everybody's just going to have to lap out as a duck hunt player, but significantly quicker just with the movement and aerials too. So this means he's going to be like a menace in the neutral even without his projectiles. And like the projectiles themselves seem to aid um, aggressive play a lot better. So gunmen, if they are in fact quicker, which I'm pretty sure they are, but it could be placebo, then that's better for just running pressure. Can launches a lot farther and faster, so that means now that's better just as a projectile. It's harder to set up traps with it. But of course, the trap utility is still there. It's just, I think it's just, just because of the way that it launches, that nature's just kind of been diminished except for once you get somebody to the ledge. And then Clay Pigeon just feels a lot quicker to act out of, or maybe you just put something more hits done. Like, I was able to get Clay Pigeon combos pretty consistently, um, and I even felt like double Clay Pigeon to Clay Pigeon would be a lot easier to do in this engine. And that could just be mostly due to the way that the movement works, and the jump squat being universally three frames as well. Um, and the blue knockback as well, because when you jump, you automatically jump to your max height. So that definitely helps out. Quite a bit. That's actually something people don't talk about. Like they said, oh, is balloon knockback gonna hurt everything? Well, the thing is, your jump is also balloon knockback oriented, where you just jump immediately. So, like the second you jump, you're always you're just basically automatically gonna be at your max height. So, not only did they get their movement buff, but you did too as well. So, I don't know. I don't think it actually will. Um, and you can still do the use sound combo. We've confirmed that. Nintendo's also confirmed that as well. So all of those old can tricks, some of them will still be in there. It's just neutral wise. Neutral wise, this character is going to play completely different. And that's what every Duck Hunt main is going to have to get used to. But I have full confidence that we can do it. And I think he's going to be a really fun character. Um, the, the, one, the one way I described it is playing him a little bit more brain dead like Scrubby Duck Hunts actually felt a little bit more effective than if you were trying to play him the way that was optimal in Smash 4. Uh, just because he relied a little bit more on the way that he had to place the can, and the can placements are just completely different off of launch here. So your old setups aren't going to work nearly as well. And then, you know, the way the knockback is, can sight's not going to work the same. Shield can, I haven't really been able to try and abuse as much, but in the Nintendo video, we did get to see that he did use that, and it's still in the game. So, no, but regardless, we're going to have good setups off of that. It, and now that people can't cross us up, um, we can definitively make much better setups since we know that getting behind us isn't really going to be a top priority for a lot of characters unless their dash attack gets behind and they get to use that a lot. So definitely that'll at least simplify of where we want to keep our can placements with certain matchups.
But overall, I feel good about Duck Hunt. I'm definitely going to be playing him a lot in the beginning. I want to lab up those aerial can combos quite a bit. Fortunately, there isn't much footage of that just because most Duck Hunt players aren't used to doing that. And most people don't really know that you can do that. Or if they do, they don't really know how to lab it out. I want to lab it out if I have the time while the demo is still at the mall here. Um, but there is a chance I won't be able to. And that is going to be it. Uh, please let me know in the comment section if there is anything else you want me to cover about this character or if you have any questions yourself. Um, I am planning on keeping up with the promise of a new Smash Ultimate video every single day, whether it's going to be matches, analysis, or other good things like that. Uh, so, of course, I wanted to get this out here. Um, the next video I want to do is an update to the first part of Everything Wrong with Zero's tier list. I did gather some new information. Some of you guys in the comment section of that one helped me out. I was able to find that Bowser video on um, the Push Block Gaming. And um, I, I know why I forgot about it is because it wasn't as good as I had hoped. Or there wasn't really anything that was like too interesting that they mentioned. But there are some highlights that I have to correct myself on there. I got to play some more Dr. Mario so I have more definitive answers on him. I've researched a little bit more about Pac-Man. And he's a little bit more interesting than I thought, so I want to give more of my thoughts on that topic in particular. And uh, let's just back it up again. Uh, okay, uh, briefly before I go, I just realized there are some very important things I forgot to talk about. Um, Duck Hunt's role is actually still busted. It's still really, really quick. Even with the, the, the amount of lag that it would get sometimes, it still felt extremely fast and harder to punish. So good news for Duck Hunt mains out there. I didn't really notice much with the roll distance, so I don't know if that was buffed or nerfed. Um, somebody could go through the footage and let me know about that one. I feel like it's a little bit hard to determine with just like, you know, how much the stage will vary. If we get a 1v1 situation, we can definitely figure it out, but without that 1v1 situation, I know it's going to be hard to figure out. Um, I do have one way to at least to test it out, though, if I do ever get back to that demo. Um, Trying to think if there's any other properties I noticed. Oh yeah, throws. I didn't talk about the throws at all. I'm so sorry about that. Uh, forward throw, same thing. Back throw, same thing. So you still get your combos off of forward throw. Up throw, I did not test it that as a kill throw. There's a chance it might be, but I did not use up throw at all. Down throw has been completely nerfed. You just get no combos off of that anymore. I don't know why they did that. Like it does five percent, get nothing. It's it's dumb. <laughs> Like it's basically a useless throw at this point, so I don't I don't even know why it's in the game, uh, but I do think that I think that covers just about everything, and we'll split it back into the old outro that I did. And other than that, um, I will talk about more of the characters I got to try out. Oh yeah, Falco's another one I have to address in that um, video as well because I finally did get to play him, and fortunately Falco's not looking good. I'm I'm not liking Falco. Zdare's better, but he didn't gain anything significant to help him out in neutral. It just kind of helps him out with punish game, and he kind of needed more neutral presence. The laser lag, it's it's going to be very situational where you're going to be able to really abuse that against somebody. And some other things. Hopefully some Falco players can prove me wrong, but um, he feels like a nerf. It's like a buff and nerfed Smash 4 Falco, and it kind of makes him equally as good as Smash 4 Falco is the best way I can put it which isn't too hopeful. Doc, I actually feel a lot better about, um, so I definitely want to talk about him again. And then K. Roll, I have to update as well, um, just because there was some new information on him that came out that I want to get my two, I want to make sure people know about. Um, we learned some new gameplay things. I want to talk about some new tactics that we discovered when we were labbing him out, um, or at least when some other people were labbing him out. Um, I guess some other general impressions that I got as well. Let me Please let me know in the comments which characters are you interested in me in covering particularly if you want me to go more in depth with Duck Hunt. I kind of did a glance overview of him, but the main reason why I did that was there's just a lot that we aren't too sure about. We kind of have a good idea of how the moves function, but we don't have the nuances down yet. That's going to be the biggest thing. But if there are more nuances you want me to learn about or research, let me know. I'll try my best to find out and get those answers for you guys. Any characters that you want me to go out and um, get more information on, I'll try to do my best on that. And um, check my Twitter. I will be posting my schedule of the videos that I intend to do. And then, you know, when those videos get made, they'll be made a premiere on here so you know what videos are going to be coming up. And if I do end up doing another analysis stream, of course, you guys will be the first to know about that. So you guys can do live interactions with me. We can answer our own questions there so we don't have to ask them and answer them later. And, you know, get some good, healthy discussions going on with this game. And also, if you want me to do a follow-up to the stage rule set on, like, what Xanadu proposed, I wouldn't mind doing a video on that as well. Just let me know what you guys are interested in t uh, hearing. I'm going to keep doing my videos. Weekly schedule will be up today. Um, and with that said, I'll catch you all guys later. Take care.